Le but de cette présentation est de vous familiariser tell you about something which is not well known in the ocean world, the importance of uh, coastal lagoons for marine productivity. As you can see, lagoons are shallow expanses, maximum 10 meters, at the interface between the marine world and the continental world. They are separated from the sea by a stretch of sand and uh, pebble, and uh, this stretch is called the Lido, and there are passes opening towards the ocean or the sea. Depending on the number of passes and the intensity of exchange with the ocean, environment, there are four different types of uh, lagoons, the estuary lagoons, usually at the estuary of large rivers, communicating uh, relatively freely with the sea, with a shape going inland. Open estuaries or open lagoons uh, were with several river estuaries communicating with the sea, semi-closed lagoons or with less uh, contributions from the continent and closed lagoons which are permanently or temporarily closed. The presence of a very little tidal range is the best condition for a lagoon to develop, but lagoons can also be found on uh, all oceans around the globe, under all latitudes, not only in the Arctic area, but also in the tropical areas, uh, going through desert areas and temperate areas. As you may see from this picture, the uh, area depends a few square meters uh, to several thousand square meters. Here we have the Dos Patos Lagoon in Brazil, which can be seen even from uh, outer space. From the take-home message from my presentation will be that lagoons uh, account for 13 percent of the world coasts. And uh, the coast of several continents across the world shows uh, a number of well-developed lagoons forming a sort of filter between the continent and the sea or the ocean. In these uh, areas, the rivers discharge mud in the lagoons before this uh, mud can enrich the coastal area. This may have a huge importance for the productivity in those areas. Research during the last 20 years has shown that productivity of coastal ocean areas often were dependent on organic matter brought by uh, rivers uh, onto the coast. This was shown in Marseille in the uh, Golf du Lyon. There was a strong correlation between the uh, number of uh, flat fishes being landed and the flow from the Rhone, the main river, which constitutes the main contribution of organic matter from the continent to the Mediterranean Sea. This connection can be accounted for by the fact that particular organic matter brought by the river is consumed by the community of fishes living on the bottom of the sea and the mismatch between the flooding uh, years and the uh, quantity of fish being landed can be explained because it makes a difference on the way the uh, fishes feed and uh, also the polychaete uh, worms are the preferential prey uh, during the um, larval phase but also the adult phase and the uh, quantity of these worms depends on the floods. So we have productivity being influenced because uh, these fishes are caught in the littoral lagoons. The organic matter is trapped in the lagoons, and we have tried to understand uh, how to uh, analyze uh, this organic matter being caught in the flesh of uh, fishes uh, who come to the lagoon to reproduce and then go back to the sea. We want to understand how this is going to influence the stock of uh, fishes in the sea, but also the coastal productivity. Here we have several examples of fishes which in France use lagoons 
when they are juveniles because uh, they can uh, live in salty uh, water during this phase and year after year they can be found in huge quantities in littoral lagoons. Until now, we did not know how important it was for the preservation of coastal productivity and uh, fish productivity of the export towards the sea of carbon being caught in the flesh of these fishes during this time they spend in the lagoons. We ask this question because if lagoons do present advantages for juveniles of uh, some species, especially because they are thus protected from uh, predators which uh, only live in the sea, or because their temperature is higher and there is abundance of prey and they can grow faster because of uh, very saline water. At the same time, lagoons uh, being shallow are also submitted to a number of disadvantages and climate changes, uh, winter frost or pollution or anoxic uh, crisis during the summer period. Lagoons are therefore also deadly traps for juveniles of fishes uh, who choose to grow in those lagoons. And in some cases, they can be a dead end street for species uh, who chose to colonize them. So we decided to test this for the sole and the uh, sea bass because both uh, species uh, like to live in lagoons in spite of the fact that they have an entirely different shape. We therefore caught adult fishes from both species and thanks to uh, biogeochemical tracers uh, present in their flesh and in some calcified pieces, we tried to reconstitute their migration uh, history and their feeding history. We were able to show, as you can now see from this map and the pie charts on the right-hand side slide, that uh, in both cases, lagoons had played an essential role for the constitution of uh, the species uh, fished in the sea. For the sea bass, only 15% of the individuals who survived to become adults had grown in the sea, and the majority had grown in uh, low salinity uh, lagoons, whereas for the soul, for flat fishes, the lagoon had played an essential role. 55% of the fishes had grown in the uh, lagoons, but in this case, they had grown in lagoons with a high highly saline water. Maintenance of the stocks of both species, uh, which are fished in the sea, depend very much on the diversity of the habitats found by juveniles in the lagoons. It is absolutely essential that lagoons are preserved. However, lagoons play an essential role for coastal productivity. It doesn't stop here. Our results also showed the following findings. Although rivers bring uh, organic matter from inland towards the sea, but this varies a lot between one lagoon and another. All of the organisms living in the lagoons can use those organic matters. And this is what you can see on the left-hand side, systematic trapping of uh, organic matter coming from the continent in the flesh of both species, although they feed on different types of prey, They have different eating habits. Depending on the type of lagoon, and this is uh, more obvious for highly saline waters. In some sea basses, uh, this may reach 75% of the flesh of the individuals, and in some cases, even 80%, showing that uh, organic matter is exported from inland towards the sea, and without those fishes, the organic matter would be trapped in the uh, coastal lagoons. Those results are being confirmed for other lagoons in other environments and with other species in the tropical, in tropical areas and in temperate areas uh, as well. But what matters here is that we should not ignore the importance of the role played by lagoons in coastal productivity and the carbon cycle, especially transfers of carbon and organic matters between the continent and the sea. And in conclusion, I would like to encourage everyone to preserve the diversity of lagoons, because lagoons are very sensitive environments uh, which are threatened by uh, 
global warming and climatic changes and they play an essential role if we want to preserve marine resources and ocean productivity such as we know them today.